And uh, now I'm going to give it back to Kevin to keep tell you more about it. So. Thanks, Brad. That was great. Whew. Wrist night. All right. Well, now I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go back into the uh, the five components that I talked to you about a little bit earlier. The five big components in the App Engine stack. I'm going to dive down some more technical detail now to get into some more details of the product. So. The first of our five components is our scalable serving infrastructure. We, we took this photo earlier this morning where the team was backing up before the launch. Um, but our, our, scalable web, our scalable web serving infrastructure is a big part of App Engine. It's a distributed low overhead system where a distributed low overhead system for running your code. When you submit your code to us, as you saw Brett do, it's pushed to a number of fault tolerant servers running within our data centers. We handle all the work of requesting, uh, connecting the request down from the user to a running instance of your code in the data center. Now, when I say that the system is fault tolerant, what I mean is that across our servers that we put your code on, um, any one of them could fail at any moment in time, and we will still connect your request to one of our servers and still be able to serve it. It's part of how Google does infrastructure. Um, and so another aspect of which sort of follows from that about the way that we serve your web apps is that it's fluid. We don't, uh, we don't ask you to reserve resources up front. You don't have to tell us how many CPUs you want, how many machines you need, or anything like that. Instead, we scale and move your application in response to demand and response to load. So that's the scalable web serving infrastructure. And again, a big part of the goal of App Engine is to make everything easy. So that's one thing we just take out of the equation for you to make easier. Now, our second big component is our Python runtime. As I mentioned, Python is the first supported language with App Engine. However, I say the word runtime because our language support in App Engine is actually modular. All of the same infrastructure that you're seeing here, the set of APIs and uh, the admin console, all of the tools that we're providing for you are generic, and they apply to multiple languages. So we can drop new languages in later. Now, the Python that we use with App Engine is the same Python that you've grown to know and love. There are a wealth of third-party modules and libraries that you can use with it. And in short, we want you to be able to use any code that you'd like with App Engine. We don't want to restrict you to any specific thing. In fact, we don't want to restrict you to any specific type of HTML or CSS or JavaScript or content type or anything. We want you to be able to create any sort of web app that you can think of on App Engine. So the next big component that we've got is our SDK. This is the environment you use to develop an app locally. And it's what you saw Brett use just now in the demo. We're releasing it today for Linux, Mac, and Windows. But it's written in pure Python. So anywhere that you can get a Python interpreter running, you can likely get the SDK running. Now, the, the big benefit of the SDK, why I really like it, is how it cuts down the code compile test cycle for you. We don't require you to deploy our, your code to our servers each time you want to test it out. Instead, you just run it locally using the editors you're used to, the tools you're used to, and your changes show up instantly as you're coding. I think this brings a lot of the fun back to programming. So our fourth big component is the admin console. Right here is a screenshot of it. This web-based admin console is a, a big part of the simpler alternative we're, we're providing for you. In essence, we're actually providing you a simpler alternative to the whole LAMP stack. And the admin console is what ties that together and provides you all the tools you're used to using. It allows you to see the status of your application. It allows you to control who can administer the application, add other users as admin so that they can upload new versions. It allows you to uh, control which version of your app, if you have multiple versions, receives most of the traffic. But it also provides a number of additional tools that you may be used to using in different forms. That includes tools for looking at your request logs and your application logs, um, a data explorer, which is our uh, alternative for a SQL administration tool. It allows you to look into your data and check on the properties, add new entities, and so forth. Uh, and it, it provides an administration interface for hooking up a domain to your application. You don't need to run just on the default AppSpot domain that you saw. And it also provides some stats, which are collected in near real time, which tell you how much traffic you're receiving, 
uh, what errors you're receiving and what URLs you're receiving them on, and so forth. So our fifth big component is the data store, which is our persistence layer. The data store, it's a schemaless object store that supports millions of entities. Under the covers, though, what's interesting about the data store is it's not implemented with a clustered SQL database, which is how you would usually provide uh, a large data storage layer. Instead, it uses Bigtable, which is a piece of scalable infrastructure that we use here at Google. Now, um, you can read some papers online about Bigtable if you want. They're fascinating. But the, the short of it is that Bigtable is a horizontally distributed scalable system that, again, is fault tolerant and spans thousands of machines and tens and thousands of disks. It automatically reacts to hotspots, moving your data around as load changes. So the fact that we're using Bigtable here, though, in, and not SQL, is a big difference. It's a big departure from what people are used to. And we know that getting used to this new way of doing things and this new methodology, it's going to take a, take a little getting used to. There's some new tools that you have to use. There's some new ways you have to program, some of the ones that you saw Brett use. Eventually, however, we think that this will pay off. We think that uh, you may actually come to like the system a little bit better. Um, one big advantage of using our system in the data store is that it's schemaless. If you want to introduce a new entity type, or you want to add a new property to your entity, as you saw Brett do, um, there's nothing to it. You don't have to go and update your schema, or deploy something new, or break out. It's just code. So again, it, it gets back to making the whole thing really easy to do, and allowing you to just write your code. So now, actually, I'm going to dive in a little bit more on a model class, uh, which is the, the way that we expose the data store primarily. Uh, you saw Brett use it uh, a little bit ago. Now this right here is defining a model class for a story, which is something like a typical news story you might see, a story on a, a news site. And this is just a normal Python class. There's nothing special about it. Um, it's just an interface that we're using to get down to the data store. I defined three properties here. One is a title, which I said is a type string. That means it's indexed and that you can query on it. And we also have a body property which I've said alternately is of type text. By saying it's of type text, I mean that it is not indexed, but instead can hold much more information. So, because uh, it, it's uh, not efficient to scale a really large, to, sorry, to index a really large string. And I've also added an author property. Now this is of type user. And what this means is it stores a rich object, the user account object of the a login user, which I can supply when I'm creating this object. So we don't just support primitive types, we also support more advanced types with the data store. Now I can go ahead and start using this model in my application, use it, write some code, store some entities, and then I can come back and add more properties. So here I've gone and added two more properties. I added a date time property with the creation timestamp. It's pretty straightforward. But I've also added a rating property. Now a rating property, you might think, well, what's that? That's a little unusual. Well, what this is, this is one of the GData types that we support with GData, another system from Google. And it's actually a semantic type. With the data store, we also support richer semantic types, which are very interesting because then they allow you to store an entity and get it back and work with it in a generic way, using a, an XML namespace for each type of the semantic type. So anyways, that gives, you, that gives you a taste of how you actually go ahead and store data and what you can do with our models. Now, even though we are a departure from SQL with the data store, we provide a very powerful query interface that is sufficient for building real applications. Some of the things that we support with our querying capabilities include queries on a single property or multiple properties, sort orders, again, on a single property or multiple properties, as on the energy sending, um, transactions, so that you can write a group of entities together with consistency guarantees, and we also support things like batch operations and uh, user settable primary keys and a few, other, a few other parts of the system. Now, to demonstrate some of these to you, I'm actually going to show you a, a query. I'm going to use GQL, which is something that you saw in the demo. And GQL is a simplified SQL-like query language that we provide. It's similar to, um, in spirit, things like jQuery or FBQL which, although they're not SQL, make it easy to interact with other data sources. So I'll go ahead and show that to you. 
Uh, here with GQL, I've done a pretty simple query, again, off that same story class that I just showed you. Here I said I like to select from stories, uh, where the title is App Engine Launch, it's happening right now, and the, the author, I've said I want that to be the current user. Here that's an, a, uh, a keyword argument that I passed in when constructing the query. And that's a pretty simple query. You can actually do considerably more advanced queries. Some of the other things that you can show that, that you can do are ask for, in the same query, object with a rating over 10 for that rating property. And I can also request that the results be sorted by rating and also to create a timestamp, even though it wasn't in the query. So that gives you an idea of the sort of queries that we can support. Now, I should also mention that since we're not SQL, there's another big feature of SQL that we don't support, and that's joins. We don't provide joins for you with the data store. Now, the reason that we don't provide joins is that joins tend to only work well in databases that are within a single machine's memory. When you go outside the memory of a single machine and you're running on multiple machines, it's hard to do efficient algorithms for implementing joins. So that's why we don't provide them. But that actually underscores something that's a little bit exciting about App Engine. Because we don't provide things like that, I'm sorry, what's exciting about it is that although we don't provide it, it's because the system that we're providing to you allows your applications to scale. Because the data store is built on a horizontally scalable fault tolerance system, and your data can span many hard disk and machines, and already does, it means that if you create your application carefully, you think it through it a little bit when you're writing it about how it might scale, and you design your queries with a little bit of foresight, your application can easily scale to millions of users and millions of entities. All right, so those are the five big components in the App Engine stack. Now, I did also want to mention a couple other features and APIs that we provide. And the first off is our email sending API. That's another API that we provide. We allow you to create and send emails. But again, in the spirit of App Engine making things easy, we don't require you to set up an SMTP server or do anything like that. You just create a mail object and you can send it. We also provide the ability for you to make outgoing HTTP requests to the internet with our URL fetch API. This API is neat because it allows you to integrate with existing other services and web services. Another thing that we provide is authentication with Google accounts. Again, it's the same sort of story. You don't have to maintain user objects and passwords and do any of that. We'll handle all of it for you. When you create your app, you already have a bed of users that you can call from. And finally, another big feature is that we support frameworks. Uh, now, in the demo, you saw us use a really simple little framework that we provide just to help you get started. But we support much larger frameworks, like the whole Django framework. Those are really helpful when you, want to, when you move from writing a small web app to a much larger web app that has hundreds or thousands of pages on it. All right, well, those are the big components of the App Engine system. I hope that now, after giving you guys a quick talk, you're able to see how we're trying to provide a simpler alternative for creating and running web applications.